Hello everyone, today we have a beautiful plane from Flightline, the Falk Wolf 190, and I'm curious how good she's going to be today. We'll go ahead and start the unboxing and talk about what, what, what is in here. So, from Flightline, this plane comes as an 1120mm plane, which is a fairly decent size for a Warbird. Um, I would have preferred a 1200, but I, I can do with just being 80 millimeters short. Um, according to the website, she can either fly on a 3 cell or 4 cell battery, which is a very nice offer to have, because once you start getting some Warbirds, it's either they only fly good on 4 cells, or they're only capable on 3 cells. It's nice to have the nice scale flying on a 3 cell, and then go ballistics on a 4 cell. And apparently she likes the heavier battery. So I've, after watching the website and with Captain Ryan, he always has suggested this plane with a heavier 4000 3 cell or the heavier 4000 4 cell battery. So we'll see how well she flies on one of those batteries. I'm very curious myself. And for me, overall, I'm very excited for this plane. This plane has been something I've wanted for a while because my first my second Warbird I've had decent enough success with was a Falk Wolf 190 until I learned an inverted flying and reversed my elevator and she went plumbing into the ground. So this is my retribution and hopefully I don't destroy her like I did my first Falk Wolf. There we go. She's overall in a pretty small package, which is nice. The standard packaging for a plane. And this would be the second version of the Falk Wolf they did. The first I want to say the actual first branded white line that came from Freewing. Yeah, package on pretty good. So let's begin and see what we got. The nice thing about Flightline, we get many decal options, which is wonderful. It looks like they set up set us up for three different planes we can put the decals for, which is wonderful having that customization. Like most brands, you're stuck with this one decal set. I, I really appreciate that from the brand so far. Oh, and the big gorgeous wings. There's something about this wing profile that I love since I got my first one. Nice manual. And overall I'm happy with packaging. Everything is deeper inside the packaging and nothing from the top is going to be a little harder to hit a larger amount of the plane. The wing isn't pulled over like normal, so if something did hit, it's less likely something would get damaged, which is which is really nice detail. Woo! Ah, and of course radial planes. I love them. And as a buddy of mine, you gotta love the three blade propellers. And the prop is mounted, which is unusual, very unusual. And I'll have to check uh, check later on during the build process, but the pictures usually show it has a very iconic uh, corkscrew effect on the nose, and right now we don't have it. So it looks like it's an optional decal we can install, which is nice for people who want it or don't want it. And overall, I'm very happy with how good that is looking so far. 
And unlike the side-by-side -side comparison shootout will do with this plane in the Hobby King version, the HK, this isn't a big old flat piece. It has curvature to it. So it'll be interesting to compare the two. Our nice little droppable tank on the bottom. All our some extensions. That's really nice to have a set of Ys and everything. That's handy to have. The kit for the guns and for holding on the drop tank details. And our horizontal stabilizers. With carbon fiber rods going all the way through here, and they'll look like they're going to attach on nicely to those. The little protrusions we have here. Oh, and all the hinge kit. We'll find out why we need a hinge kit here in a second. And that is everything. So, we'll go ahead and begin building this beautiful plane. Overall, she looks pretty easy to get together. And we have King Boxer for our glue. We have a non-generic brand for once. I kind of want to look these up, look up their website. That's the first time I've seen a non, a branded bottle of contact cement. Oh. And they actually label the pieces that are in there. And you see that. That's really nice. I was surprised by that actually. So. And there's something funny on this. I've, I've got a weird residue on my hands from the packaging and all. I just noticed that. I'm curious what's going on. So looking at the hinges, we have actually only two nice hinges on the ailerons, but it is a live phone hinge on the flaps. There are control horns on both the control surface and the aileron, but I had to put the linkage on. And that is both the same for flaps and ailerons. And the nice little detail that Flightline has been doing is even though they use a plastic house housing for the retracts, they're putting a metal hat on them, which helps reinforce them a lot. This really helps a lot with the nylon housing of the retract. And we'll take a quick look at the tail. Tail is also live hinge. And so are the elevators. So if you want to, I guess they give you the hinges if you want to hinge them yourself at least. But these are the cheaper plastic, all plastic. I don't prefer them. I'd rather go buy out and buy a slightly nice one, but it's nice that they include them. Okay, so now we should get into our build process. We'll go ahead and get that rolling for you. Enjoy the music while you wait.
Well, she's finished, and she is a beautiful plane. Let's go ahead and see how well she actually pulls on a four cell. Whoo! She she has quite a bit of power on this four cell, and it is amazing. We also off camera checked with the three cell, and she has more than enough as well. So she'll be very capable both on a three and four. I feel like at this point, if you want more skill flight, just stay at a big old three cell battery. Overall, this plane, I, it looks beautiful. It absolutely gorgeous. However, there are some issues with her. Um, the detailing overall is fantastic. We got some actual weathering on her from factory, which is a nice touch. I don't see this a lot on other planes, and I'm really happy they did this. It's just there's some breaks in continuity in the weathering, so we have a lot of exhaust. The uh, weathering coming off of here, however, nothing on the wing, which is just a missed opportunity to me that the company could take. But overall, I'm happy they've helped me with the weathering, because this is something I've always wanted to see on planes. It's a nice detail, because these are war burps. They weren't meant to stay in the hangar. They fought, they were in battles, and they came back scarred. And I'm glad they added these details to it. Overall, continuing on the small little details, the cannons are beautiful. Um, when gluing these in, I found out they actually have hooks on the back to help bite in the foam. Compared to other planes I've done where they simply slide in, which is a nice alternative, or they, they're on the very outside of the plane, barely holding on for life. And if this plane is screaming at 4-cell, and they didn't have those hooks, they may just pull off. I'm glad they included nice adhesive for these on, and they have the hooks. Um, coming to the back of the plane, overall, I love the horizontal stabilizer. It has the good details that it needs to have. However, even though I have three QC marks on the inside of this plane and the fuselage, double check the clevises. They were not tight enough, and as I wiggled these back to check those, they started moving on me. Even though I had the plane powered on with the servos connected, the servos weren't moving, they were just loose. That would have ruined my first flight. At first they felt tight enough until you worked them and they would pop right off. And that kind of brings me into my next part. The wing screws on this. The screws holding the wing onto the back of it. They're overall a very small diameter and long. And they are not a standard Phillips. I don't know exactly what they are, but using a very high quality Phillips driver, they were not biting in as well. I was slipping on them, which is terrible. That means I'm going to ruin those bolts, and they aren't a standard like M3, M2 bolt. They are a coarse thread long bolt. Which, what are they going into is a great question to ask. Well, they're going into straight plastic. They're a coarse thread. They're expected to just bite inside plastic, which tells me the manufacturer did not expect this plane to be taken apart for easy, for easy transportation. They expect this plane to be transported as is with gear up, which sucks for me. Me and my friends, we like taking our entire museum planes to the airfield. And this kind of sucks. Because that is going to wear on me. That's going to shorten the lifetime of this plane. Which is sad. Because I do look forward to flying this plane. And I hope she flies as well as she looks. Um, and then moving on to landing gear. Overall, I think the landing gear are pretty good. They got plastic struts for detail, which is very nice to have. However... My pants on, I guess you could call them pants, were painted to the wing itself. I had to pull, have them retract out, pull them a little bit so they actually come fully actuated out, and they remove paint. It's not the biggest deal because it's on the bottom of the plane where the pant covers up most of the time, but it kind of sucks. I have, I think I count over 10 QC marks and that got missed. How did this get missed during quality control? That's... It's a bummer. It's a real bummer. And we can move on to the beautiful power plant of this plane. Big old radial engine. You know, gotta have these nice little details of pushing air in to keep it cool. I, I'm glad they added the little fins here. It's not a it's not a fault if it doesn't have the fins. However, the nice little detail we have here is a easy to remove prop. This is the retaining piece. I'm kind of 50-50 on this. I'm glad it's big and easy to handle. However, I, 
if you're trying to get this nice and tight, try and clamp down on this, and if it's cold day, you may break a plastic piece. That makes me nervous. Then we come off for our third piece, and we have a proprietary props screwing in. I'm, I'm on the fence about it. My issue with proprietary props like this is amazing. If I break one, I just replace one blade. I don't have to buy a full set. It makes it cheaper overall for replacement parts. However, is getting replacement parts. What happens all the time in this wonderful hobby of ours is back orders or things go out of print. This is just part of the beast that is our hobby. And if I had a normal three blade I could slap in, it wouldn't be an issue. However, I am stuck with having this type of blade if I want to keep having the nice fins that make a Falkworth beautiful. And on the back is a nice square um, retaining piece. So we have a lot of surface area for this thin plastic bite into, but I feel like it's a little too thin of plastic. If it was just a tad bit thicker, and maybe an actual nylon for these pieces with impreg impregnate with embedded glass, I would feel a lot better about these pieces, but they're not. They're not they're not as good as they could be. I feel like it's just a missed part opportunity on the company to make an outstanding plane. And this kind of gets into the awkward part of getting this on. But once she gets on, she does feel like she's on pretty good. So at least there is that for that piece. And I have to agree with Captain Ryan on the battery. She's going to need a big battery and a very small compartment. Overall, we have just a 1300 um, four cell in the compartment and we put it top, so it's taking out the most room on the top to try to figure out how tall the battery can put in. And it's maxed out. If I went with any taller of a battery here, the canopy wouldn't fit on and there's nothing it's just flat on this piece, so there's no extra space I can get from that. Which, this is a small enough, thin enough piece, it doesn't need have a cavity. Um, so that gets into the fun part of a clown car in the nose. How are we going to fit a big old 4 cell or a big old 3 cell in here? Because she needs a big battery to get her CG right. Just checking with a normal 3 cell 2200 on her recommended center of gravity. She barely wants to be those tail heavy. Going up, bumping up to a 3000 three cell, she begins to level out. I believe once you get into the, we don't have a battery for it for comparison at this moment, but with the 3000 just being perfectly CG, having a 4000 gives you a little bit of nose heavy, which is a nice to have with the Warbird. It makes a little bit more of a predictable flight for me. I've always enjoyed my Warbirds being slightly nose heavy. And we can move on from the front of the nose to the back. And this is the most beautiful canopy at this price point I've ever seen. Even if you bump up to $500, you don't get as beautiful a canopy, cockpit, I guess I should say, cockpit, as you have here. The D, you have a full pilot with legs. A lot of the brands, you just get a bust, which is fine. But it's a full, full guy in there, beautifully painted. And there's actually 3D to the cockpit. It's actually fully modeled out, I guess is the best way of saying it. So I can, if I look in here, I can see an actual thro throttle, all the little buttons you'd have access to. It blows me away that's in there. This is the first plane I've had that much detail in the cockpit and it makes me fall like further in love with this plane. Overall, I gotta say if I would have to rate her, Rate her, she'd be a 7 out of 10. I'm pretty happy with the plane. There's just a few missed details. If she flies as well as she looks, she'll probably bump up to an 8 out of 10 for me. Till next time, keep on flying.